Okay, so we are ready to start sawing on our copper now. We've prepped it, it's ready to go. Our design is attached. Um, I have loaded my saw frame with my saw blade. It has proper tension. Remember, you check that using the sound. Tink, 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 high pitched, not a low pitched thud. You also need a bench pin, which hopefully you all have that by now on your shelf, and then probably extra saw blades nearby. The last thing you need is a piece of wax, just beeswax. Remember that helps us, um, it'll actually help us keep our saw blades lubricated so that they don't bind and scratch on the metal too much um, and you have a smoother cut forward. Positioning does matter when you're sawing with your saw frame. So when I get myself set up, I'm right-handed. So you want your bench pin and where your sawing zone is gonna be to be in front of your dominant shoulder. So I'm right-handed, which means I'm gonna set my bench pin up like directly in front of my right shoulder here. I might move that back a little bit so you can see me better. There, okay, so my bench pin. Remember there is a little notch cut out. This is where the attachment or the um, clamp part lives. And then this is just gonna be clamped onto the table or wherever you are sawing at. Your fingers now never ever cross over inside of your V of your bench pin because that's where your saw blade's gonna live. And even though that sucker is tiny, it's mighty and it will cut through your skin well before you ever know it's cutting through your skin. So keep your fingers away from that. When I hold mine, there's two different ways. Some people like to just clamp on the top, kind of leave their thumb loose, but I like to clamp top and bottom. I feel like I have more control. So you'll always see me clamp top and bottom of my um, metal. The next thing to do is going to be grab your saw blade and you're gonna wax. So I'm going to wax my saw blade just a couple times here. I might try to, we're just gonna go for it. So where I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna start cutting down here along my edge. Okay, so actually I'm supposed to have a straight. So this is my one straight and the rest of them are curves. So I'm gonna saw my straight first. So as I'm sawing, I want, just be in tune with the sound of the blade. Um, I, the whoosh, whoosh motion as you're sawing, you should actually hear the back and forth. It's kind of a higher pitched, almost like gentleman, uh, like a turbo in your motor, kind of like that. So I'm gonna position myself. My right shoulder is directly in front of my bench pin where I'm gonna be sawing at. I'm gonna have to scoot back a little bit. Then I'm actually gonna pull this closer and adjust it so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Okay, cool. So I'm sawing on my straight, which is this line right here that I made really dark. When you start a cut, you need to start at an angle, and this is the only time ever that your blade should be, um, or your saw frame should be at an angle. Um, so you need a place for that saw blade to live. So I'm gonna put it on the line where I want it. I'm gonna start towards the bottom and I'm gonna work my way towards the top because that's the direction the saw teeth are going. That's the direction it's gonna cut. It cuts down, not up. So I'm gonna just make a couple swipes. Right here to give it a place to live. Now anytime you're sawing, you wanna saw to the outside of your line because then later on when we start cleaning it up, we'll be able to use files and things to get you closer and right up against it which is why we work so hard on our designs to begin with. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna start. I'm in my notch, I'm gonna turn my blade to straight up and down, and then I'm gonna saw. As you're sawing, it is worth your while to do full pulls. You don't just wanna saw really fast in a small spot because you're not using the entire length of the blade. Okay, also, you can't push your blade into your metal. You need to let the tool do the work. So if you hear a hard binding against your metal, you need to ease off pressure. All that you're doing if you're pushing too hard is dulling your blade and you're not actually cutting through your metal any faster. So I'm gonna cut to the outside of my line. I go a couple swipes to get going. And then I go straight up and down. It's kind of a high pitched 
You can hear that whooshing in the background. So you can kind of hear that it changed sounds a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and wax my blade. Please know that if, if you don't hear this high pitched sound and you hear something more like this, you're, you're pushing too hard. You need to ease off pressure and let the tool do the work. You can start to kind of, when you get better, you'll be able to feel it start to stick before you can ever hear the sound change and you need to wax your blade, but I just wax here. Now anytime you need to stop when you're sawing, you, you'll see me, I am in a tendency to stop on the bottom. So where my blade is towards, my, my metal's resting at the bottom. You can stop bottom or you can stop top, but you don't ever want to stop in between and set it down because you'll bind the blade and your blade will break. So at the end of a class period, if you're still sawing, don't remove your blade ever, just leave it where it lives, but stop at the top or at the bottom. And keep sawing. I'm gonna get through this quick so I can show you how to turn a corner. So sawing to the outside of your line, stopping to wax your blade frequently. Pay attention to the sound of my blade, it's not binding. I'm using the entire length of it all the way up and down best I can. Keeping my blade straight up and down. I dulled my blade on purpose when I um, let you guys listen to the sound of what it sounds like if you're pushing too hard. So I'm, I'm not cutting through as efficiently, but we'll get there. Now, it's okay if you accidentally cut into the wood of the bench pin. That's what it's there for. Okay, so I'm going to saw forward until I get to a stopping point. Heard the sound change. Need to wax my blade. Um, the reason we do ink is because as you saw, you're going to get little pieces of copper here, and then you're going to want to brush them off. I just use my finger here. You can use a paintbrush. Um, that works really well, too. But you definitely want to be able to clean your line off without worrying about smearing it. So when I get up to this end here, you want to saw almost to the end of your line. So I'm going to clean this off here. So I am currently almost to the end of my line, and I'm ready to turn that corner. When you turn a corner, these blades do have a flat side on either side. So this side and this side are flat. And then this is where the sharp part is, and then this side's dull back here. There's no blade. So in order to turn a corner, you need to put your, I, I call it neutral, just like in a car, but you need to put your blade in neutral, which means I'm not gonna be moving it forward, but I am gonna be having it move up and down. So not forward, but up and down without making any noise, right up in there. You're gonna turn your metal, and as you turn your metal, you're gonna hear the teeth grab and it's gonna saw a little bit. Go a couple times until it stops making sound, and then you turn again. Once you start turning the corner, I can almost hold my saw blade like back towards me in that line so that it doesn't um, accidentally saw forward as I go turn the corner. But, so no noise. Turn your metal and then it'll bind a little bit or cut a little bit. Kind of see how that happened. Then I've turned my corner like officially, so my blade is now turned. See how my frame is facing that direction? So now I'm ready to start cutting on that curve. And you just keep going all the way around until you get all the way through your metal. So I'll stop forward a little bit. When you're ready to start turning, you turn your metal. And so then you can keep sawing. And you should be able to see a little bit there, maybe. Uh, eh. 
um, that I am sawing to the outside of my line. Hopefully, maybe. Ah. Sawing to the outside of my line. Anytime you stop, stop at the bottom and or at the top. Okay. Um, another helpful piece of advice. If you do break a blade, instead of, instead of trying to retrace your line to get your blade back to where you left off, you just pick a new spot. So let's say I were to accidentally break this blade here, which I'm just gonna unload it and pull it apart. Show you quick. Let's say I were to have broken that blade right there, reload it, get it a good ping. And then instead of trying to retrace the line, cause you're never gonna get there without breaking a blade, you just start in a new place. So I'm actually gonna start over here and then I'm gonna saw in and then connect the two and this piece of metal will fall out. Any extra pieces of metal that you guys have that's removed, I have a copper container on my desk for the scrap. My only request is that you do peel the paper off before you put it in there. Otherwise, I have to do that and it's just a lot more work than it's worth. Easier for you to do one piece at a time. Um, anything extra, you just keep on your shelf until the next day. Um, remember, it's okay to stop in the middle of a saw and store for the next class period as long as you're start storing at the bottom or at the top. That way when you set it down, you don't break your blade.